They used to say, all roads lead to Rome. And for nearly a thousand years, that wasn't far from the truth. At one time, over 50,000 miles of roads led right here. And while this capital city was exploding above ground, there was another world brewing down below. A world packed with pipes and sewer lines, auditoriums and cities of the dead. It's a world directly responsible for the rapid rise of Rome. And today... All right, I'm stepping down a few thousand years. We've got special access to go down. From one of the world's oldest sewers that started it all. Oh, it smells delightful down here. It's like a soup. To ancient Roman warehouses and apartment complexes hidden beneath this modern building. This is incredible. And just outside the capital, this growing city had to get creative with the dead. And they could be small ribs from a child. I, I really wouldn't know how to explain that. Entire ancient neighborhoods have vanished beneath these streets. The beginnings of modern day engineering are lost underground, as 2,000 years of dirt and debris have buried the roots of Rome. We're peeling back the layers of time on cities of the underworld. Rome, the rise. Geller, I'm in Rome, Italy, the biggest open-air museum in the world. At its height, the Roman Empire was the largest the planet had ever seen. But Rome wasn't built in a day. It's aqueducts, roads, apartment buildings, sophisticated sewers. They practically invented the modern-day big city. Millions of tourists come here to see Rome's grand palaces and Colosseum. But the clues that tell you how this small town became a great empire are still buried in its underworld. 2,000 years ago, the city of Rome had a population of over a million people. It was the capital of an empire that covered 2.3 million square miles, and its power seemed limitless. But just four centuries later, less than 15,000 people remained in the city. Its great monuments were reduced to rubble, and its once bustling forum became overgrown pastures for pigs and cattle. But there were some structures that survived untouched, underground. In the 6th century BC, Rome was a growing city. And like any growing city, it had a big problem getting rid of its waste. The solution? An innovative sewer system that would funnel wastewater out of the city and into the Tiber River. Now, it's not the most pleasant artifact in Rome. But if I want to see how this city got its start, I've got to get down there. It all begins in the Imperial Forum, in the heart of both modern and ancient Rome. Somewhere beneath the Forum lies the Cloaca Maxima, or Great Drain. It's one of the world's oldest sewers, and without it, the world's greatest capital city could have ended up a sewage-filled, second-rate town. Hey, Paul. Thanks for meeting with me. Hey, Eric. Nice to meet you. Paul Bennett, a leading expert on subterranean Rome, agreed to take me down there. So where is this sewer? Okay, well the sewer runs right here through the heart of the Forum. Uh, it goes right through this area, it runs all the way underneath the Forum and then empties into the river. Thousands of people pass through the Great Roman Forum every day. They have no idea that the roots of Rome run beneath it. But why did the Romans choose to found their city in this spot? How did a group of farmers transform a marshy valley into the world's first megacity? The answer is underground almost 20 feet beneath today's street level. The cloaca, despite its importance, is the great hidden secret of Rome. It runs silently underneath the city street. The cloaca, although it's supposed to be just filled with effluent from the streets, actually has quite a bit of raw sewage flowing through it. So you don't want to touch any of the water. There are rats, there's plenty of garbage, there's lots to trip over. You're walking up a slippery marble surface that's been covered with sludge for 2,000 years. There's quite a bit of danger. Normally, no one is allowed down into the cloaca, or Great Drain, but I had special access. Okay, so we're going to need to wear waders, and a mask, and some rubber gloves, and a helmet. Got to take off my boots, get ready to get dirty. To this day, runoff from the hills and streets of Rome still drains into the ancient sewer. You can guess what's down there. It's overflowing with disease, bacteria, and worst of all, rats. All right, take me to your sewer. Okay, you may want to put on your uh, gas mask because it's a little stinky down there. You clear, Paul? Yep. 
All right, I'm stepping down a few thousand years. Ah, oh, it smells delightful down here. It's like a soup. This is one stinky smelling sewer. Holy This is amazing. Mm -hmm. This looks like a modern facility. I mean, really, it's massive. And I can hear some water flowing over there. It's calling me. Should we go over there? Definitely. Let's go. What am I stepping in that I'm sinking into right now? Oh, you're stepping in a wonderful melange of urine and dirt mm. and paper and beer mm. bottles and pretty much everything that falls on the ground in Rome eventually makes its way into the cloaca mm. today and 2,000 years ago. Delicious. Woo! This looks like a bone, huh? Yeah, a big bone. And look, you know, pieces of pottery. This is an ancient beer bottle and a modern beer bottle. The Cloaca Maxima has been collecting Rome's trash and waste for over 2,500 years. Buried 20 feet beneath the modern city, it's one of Rome's oldest standing structures. But who was responsible for such a revolutionary idea? It was the fifth king of Rome, Lucius Tarquinius Priscus. Around 600 BC, the tribes living in the surrounding hills began to merge into one city. Their first major construction project was to build a sewer that would drain the marshes between the hills and carry away its waste. To do this, they dug a parallel channel that sloped at a perfectly steady grade from the hills into the Tiber, an impressive feat without the help of modern machinery. Large stones were fitted together to channel the stream, and finally, the water was released through the channel, creating the Cloaca Maxima. This is only about three feet high now. What is this? Yeah, everything changes here. This is part of the original Cloaca Maxima, going back to the sixth century. This is the mother load, the beginning of Rome, arguably one of the most important spaces in all of ancient Rome. And you can still see the form. Here's the arch right here. This is the Roman arch for you, in a nutshell. So it's so strong on the side that they can build right on top of it. The famous Roman arch began to show its usefulness in the sewers, beneath a quickly rising Rome. Along with the cloaca, this engineering feat, more than any other Roman invention, contributed to the rise of this city. In the beginning, the cloaca was simply an open ditch. But as the city grew, Romans needed more building space. So they began to cover the ditch and build on top. To reinforce the buildings above, they added the arch to the sewer below. And in the first century, when Rome became the richest empire in the world, they added yet another touch to the cloaca. It was nothing but the best for Rome, even in its sewers. Okay, so now I'm walking on something and it's a smoother surface. What is this here? This is the travertine area where the emperor decided, even though this is a sewer, he would use travertine to pave the floor of it. So we're walking on a kind of limestone marble surface here. So this was the fancy part of the sewer, huh? Yeah, that's right. The emperor's plan worked. 2,000 years later, here I was, down in the sewer, admiring the marble floor. As the city grew out from the center and as new larger buildings were constructed, the sewer changed as well. Since the sewers needed to reach every building, the cloaca became a subterranean network that mirrored the city above. In other words, no matter how much the city has changed today, the sewers are like a street map of ancient Rome. The cloaca spans for at least a mile beneath the city, but much of it is too dangerous to explore. We're at a juncture of a lot of different lines coming in into the central sewer of Rome. Some of these date to the antique period, some of them are modern. There was a great need to get water out of the city and to the sea. We have to stop here, we can't go any further because the floor drops out. It drops out and there is a large layer of scum right there and all these waterfalls you gotta dodge. It's hard to believe that one of the wonders of ancient Rome is a drain full of ancient sewage. But this dirty off-limits pipe was step one towards creating one of the most powerful cities in the world.